I came up with this kiln design a few years ago and thought you might like to see it, so I'll talk you through it in just a minute. As you know, charcoal is made by cooking carbon-based materials, usually timber, without oxygen. So these days people usually fill up a closed container or retort and then heat that from the outside. The other common method is to heat a retort from the inside with a controlled fire, which is much trickier because that fire will need some oxygen, but not too much or everything will turn to ash and carbon dioxide. And then there's the oldest method of all where you keep the oxygen out by constantly topping up with fresh material. This is me from a couple of years ago when I made these cone kilns for sale. All these methods work, of course, but they have one thing in common. The charcoal is made in batches. So once you've cooked up your batch, you need to empty your kiln, retort, cone, pit, whatever it is, and then start again from scratch. So I was thinking about how to make a constant flow system, something that keeps going as long as you want it to, and this is what I came up with. A horizontal round tube with an auger inside it and a motor to power the auger. So now if you put wood chips into the hopper at one end, then the auger will move them slowly along the tube until they fall out at the other end. And if you put that whole arrangement into a large horizontal flue with a fire at one end and a chimney at the other end, then you could heat up the whole tube and the auger and the wood chips and everything. I haven't drawn it here, but the fire is assisted with forced air, so it becomes a furnace and gets very hot. So hot that the wood chips heat up and cook into charcoal during the time they spend traveling from one end of the tube to the other end. Obviously the flames from the furnace can't reach the wood chips because they're inside a tube and that tube is more or less sealed by the auger so no oxygen gets in. That's why the wood chips don't burn, they just cook. So what goes in at one end is wood chips but what comes out at the other end is charcoal. Now, of course, as the wood chips heat up, first of all, water vapour boils off them, however dry they seem to be, and that is vented through small holes at the top of the tube, and that water vapour ends up going up the chimney. As the wood chips continue their journey and get even hotter, then volatile combustible gases are boiled off and they exit the tube through more holes further along. Those gases exit into the super hot flue and they burn up, adding to the available heat, especially with the addition of secondary air that's pumped in also at the top of the tube. This makes the whole furnace into a sort of gasified stove with temperatures well above 800 degrees centigrade. Baffles would be added to ensure that the flames and the heat surround the whole tube. And of course, the whole thing would be encased in insulation, ensuring a super clean burn and quick pyrolysis of the wood chips. <laughs> I sound like a, a salesperson now, don't I? Uh, but the point is, this could be run continuously with some of the charcoal used to fuel the fire. You could put in anything carbon-based as long as it would fit into the auger, so fish heads or spoiled barley or seaweed, anything you had handy, chicken manure if you like, it would all come out as charcoal. So that's the basic design, and I did make a couple of prototypes to test it. This is all that remains of the last one. Actually, this one had two auger shafts in it. It's been a few years now since I used it and I wasn't making videos back then. I was, as ever, <laughs> severely restricted by costs. I used a couple of ancient grain augers because they were all I could afford. And this version never was insulated. But even so, it did work and it got very hot. 
I was using a bouncy castle air blower to force air into the firebox and the whole thing glowed red hot. There was nothing to see coming out of the chimney. No smoke, no water because it was all invisible and the volatile gases appeared to have been burned off completely. And even this basic prototype did work very well for a little while anyway. It certainly made charcoal and that was exciting to see com coming out the end. But <laughs> there were problems. The heat melted the bearing seals in no time on the shaft and threatened to cook the motor too. <laughs> so that was an immediate problem. And the exiting charcoal was of course super hot and it spontaneously burst into flames as soon as it met fresh air. So that's another thing that would need changing. Either a spray of water would be needed or else the fresh charcoal would need to exit a pipe underwater. The concept worked out though. The problem is to scale this up and make it really efficient, a few things would need to be changed. For instance, instead of a single tube, or in this case, two tubes, um, the best arrangement would probably be a whole stack of them inside a much bigger flue, obviously, but that would be very pricey to set up. And those tubes and augers would need to be made of stainless steel and ideally they'd be much longer. And the speed that the augers are running at is critical. It's too fast and there isn't time for full pyrolysis and too slow and you're wasting fuel. And ideally you'd want to be able to vary the speed to match the temperature of the furnace automatically if you could. <laughs> and if you had a whole stack of tubes at different positions, then they probably ought to be controlled individually for maximum efficiency. So that means more sensors and speed controllers, which is certainly doable, but you know, more things to go wrong. And then there's the size of the wood chip and the shape of the wood chip, because wood chip is notorious for getting jammed in augers, unless it's really small and making small wood chips is expensive. So all in all, although I do like the concept of this machine, it's way beyond my budget to set up properly. So I'm going back to a simpler design, which we'll start on next time.